This is a gasoline powered pit bike and I'll be converting it to an electric beast. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So step number one to uh, start this build is taking off all the combustion parts, including the exhaust, the engine, gas tank, and all the other combustion parts that make this thing run. So uh, yeah, let's get right to it. All right guys, so I finally took off all the combustion parts and I'll show you guys, oh, don't wanna lose this, put that back in here. So here are all the bolts and stuff, the sprockets and everything. Here's all the electronics and like, you know, filters and everything like that, the throttle. Here we got the exhaust and finally we got the engine. As you guys could see here, if everything was okay with it, I probably wouldn't be taking off the engine until I broke it myself or something, but I picked it up for $200 and I think that was a really great deal. I think it was a steal actually. You know, even just, just the frame itself is for $200 is really good. But anyways, so here is how badly damaged it was. So someone, the, the person that I bought it from said that someone was really hard on the shifter and they broke off this whole like shaft and stuff. So I'm not looking forward to replace that. I don't know, I'm, I might be doing a video, future video of me putting this on like a mini bike and like, putting like an electric, electric motor with four speed or something, but that's gonna be like, I have no idea if I'm gonna even be doing that, so. But there's that, if you guys want it, I mean, let me know, I could probably ship it out to you. I don't know if you're allowed to ship out this kind of stuff, but everything else is fine with the motor. Here are all the plastics, the seat. Surprisingly, the seat is not even uh, torn or anything. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's in a really good condition, which is really good for $200. And here's the frame itself. This is what it looks like. Um, I don't see any damage with anything. The suspension is really good. Uh, I mean, this thing is brand new. This is 2020, by the way. The brakes, I mean, they're, they're really good too. This one has a foot brake, and actually. I mean, everything about this frame is, it's, everything about this whole bike is just awesome, you know? And I'm just really happy about that, because normally when I pick up junk stuff, I have to replace brakes and, you know, tires, flat tires and everything. This one, was in perfect condition. As you guys know, with any project, it's pretty hard to decide which battery to buy. I would say before you even look at the batteries, ask yourself these questions. How much power do I want? How much range do I need? How much space do I have? And is it the, in the price range I want it at? Once you figure out these questions, you will kind of have an idea of what you are looking for. Personally, for this project, I wanted something powerful. How powerful, you may ask? And the answer is, I want something that is capable of outputting 400 battery amps. If you are familiar with batteries, you know that if you get a high discharge cell, you will sacrifice capacity. And if you get a low discharge cell, you will gain capacity. I'm not gonna go in depth with that, but that's the simple explanation. That basically means if I make this battery, I'll have to sacrifice capacity because it's meant for high discharge. For my project, I bought the 18650 VTC 5A cells because that's what battery hookup offered me at the time they were available. Also, if you don't know um, what battery hookup is, it's basically a company online that sells all types of new and you know all types of like new and used batteries for a great deal. You should definitely check them out. I will link this website in the description below. Also, this is not any type of sponsor. I'm just trying to help out those who are, you know, trying to also build in their, you know, in a low budget. Anyways, each one of these modules consists of 15 times 18650 VTC 5A cells that are rated at 35 amps peak at 80 degrees Celsius. I don't really know what that means, but, but uh, 
continuous discharge current. So max continuous discharge current is 30. So I'm guessing, you know, it's around 30, 35, whatever. And they're also rated at 2,600 milliamp hours nominal capacity, um, which is really good. Uh, they also claim that these were never cycled, which basically means that they haven't been charged before, which is, a, which is the main reason why I actually purchased them. I'm planning on making a 20s 12 parallel which means i need to buy 240 of these cells so a quantity of a quantity of 16. um i went ahead and got 17 just just in case some of the cells are bad and i have you know some type of backup to replace them i mean just look at the price difference if if i buy 240 almost new cells from battery hookup and brand new cells from eight the 18650 battery store I wanted to go for a bigger pack, but I was pretty limited in space. So a 20 series and 12 parallel will be the best configuration with the space and budget I got. In a 20 series and 12 parallel, this pack should be able to output for 420 amps peak, and uh, which is 40 amps less than my go-kart. Also, if you haven't watched my uh, most recent go-kart video, go and check it out. That, that thing's insane. I mean, I'll show you guys a little clip of me drifting with 460 amps. It's insane, so I can't imagine what 420 amps could do. All right, guys, I finally got my order in. This is uh, what 17 modules look like in three boxes, as you guys can see here. Um, so yeah, let's open one of them up. As you guys can see, some of them don't even have the welded nickel on them, which is kind of rare to see. I'll give you guys a better look. Um, now I see why battery hookup was saying the spot welding machine wasn't working right. Um, I mean, this is kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's take off the nickel from the backside. Yeah, so the sides that have the nickel sheets are very easy to take off. It doesn't take any effort at all. Now the hard part is to take off the 18650 holders and spread them apart because with hand it's practically impossible to do it. So I came up with a solution and it is to um, take needle nose pliers and put them inside and just kind of like spread the spacers apart without damaging or scratching the cells. Um, so I can't go in too far but far Bruh. enough where I could just spread them apart. So. So here I got them all off with a bunch of tape on these. I don't really know why. Um, and I'm going to show you guys that dented cell I saw earlier. And it is right here. It's a good thing I ordered 17 of these modules because I knew something would... I knew... Oh, these are hard to take off. can't imagine doing this with hand. But here's what the cell looks like. This is not very good. You could even see like a little... You could see how bent it is over here. Something gave it lots of pressure. I don't know if this was during the shipping process or this happened while, when it was manufactured or something, but something went really wrong. So I'm definitely not gonna be using this cell. So I'll put this one aside. So yeah, I'm just gonna put these in a container and uh, I'll do the same exact process with the rest of these. Guys, I'm so dumb. I'm taking these off and I forgot to take off the nickel from the back. So I'm gonna do that really quick. All right guys, so I finally sanded everything down. That time lapse probably took around like seven seconds, but in reality, this took me, to sand every single cell down took me about four hours to do. And 
um, I haven't had any problems. Everything everything went very smooth. So uh, so the next step will be to make sure that each cell has voltage. Um, and I'm looking for more than two volts. If it's under that, I won't be using them because then that won't be safe. So yeah, let's get right to it. So, so far so good. I haven't had a cell less than 3.3 or more than 3.4 volts. So like the average is like 3.5 volts, which is really good, which gives me a good feeling that the rest of these cells are gonna be the same. All right guys, so I got very good results. Um, every single cell was either 3.3 or 3.4 volts, which is very good. Um, I haven't had a single cell that you know, was a dead cell or a cell that was overcharged or something like that. So that's a very good sign. Now um, I'm gonna be putting these back in here and making sure that these are all the VTC 5A models. So yeah, that's gonna be next. All right guys, so this is the most final step before I start building the battery pack, and it is to charge every single one of these cells. I have 12 slots, which means I have I can charge about 20, 24 cells a day. So it'll take about a week and a half or a week if I do it faster. So yeah, once, once this is all charged up, I can start building my battery. Yeah. 